Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's 5th grade, Module 11, Lesson 2. Let's start off by going over the I can objective. It says, I can represent division of a whole number by unit fraction using visual fraction models and equations. The learning objective is to represent division of a whole number by a unit fraction by using visual fraction models and equations. Prior learning is that students multiplied fractions by whole numbers using visual models and equations, and students solved word problems involving multiplication of a fraction by a whole number. So moving into the lesson, on page 271, we have a step it out word problem that reads Kat and Ann complete a new obstacle course. This course is two miles long, and there is an obstacle every one-fourth of a mile. So how many obstacles are there? So again, the course is a total two miles long, and every fourth mile, there's an obstacle. So how many obstacles do we have? So for A, it says model the situation with an equation. Let P stand for the number of obstacles. So the answer is going to be equal to P. So for that, remember with division, we want to ask what was our original number? What was our original problem? We're starting with two miles. So that's going to be the first number in our division problem. So we have two, and then we're splitting up the two miles into fourth pieces. So that's what our divisor is going to be, is that one-fourth. And then they just asked us to put it equal to P. So that would be our division. Now for B, it says represent the division equation on a number line. So remember that divisor wants to be from zero to, I'm sorry, the dividend, from zero to whatever the dividend is, that needs to be the end tick mark of our number line. So whatever the dividend is, that total number, that's the last number on our number line. So on our number line in B, we have two, which is what our original number was. That's our dividend. So if we know we're breaking it up into fourth pieces, we want to make tick marks that are one-fourth parts of each whole. And remember, that last tick mark, that four over four, is going to be your next whole number. And I'll show you what that looks like. So for here, I would have one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, and then four-fourths would be my one whole. So I would put one over four, two over four, three over four, and then I would stop labeling it because my one whole is four over four because any number over itself is one. And then my one to my two, I'm just putting a one in front of it. So one and one fourth, one and two fourths, and then one and then three fourths. So let's go ahead and mark it up, make it as equal as possible. So that's going to be my one and one fourth, one and two fourths, and then one and three fourths, and then that one and four fourths, one and one would be that two. All right, so the bullet point under B says, how does the number line represent the dividend? That's kind of what I was talking about, right? That shows the whole numbers that we're using in the problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that it shows... 0 to 2, which is our miles, and that's what our dividend is. So the second bullet point says represent the divisor, and remember the divisor is what you're dividing by, that's the 1 fourth on the number line. Draw tick marks and label the fractions. Hey, we already did that. Check. Done. Go to the next bullet point. Represent the quotient. Count the number of fourths there are in two holes. So now we're counting how many tick marks did we just draw? Well, we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight. Keep in mind, I didn't count zero as one because it's just zero. So I started zero and then when I make a move, that's one. So I had eight tick marks. So then in C, how many obstacles does the course have? It has eight obstacles. Every fourth mile, I have an obstacle for two miles. That means there's going to be eight obstacles that I run through in those two miles. 
All right, let's go ahead and flip the page. So I'm on 272. <clears throat> I have a problem number two that says Kat and Ann practice the rope climb at the obstacle course. The rope is three yards long and there is a knot every one third of a yard. So how many knots are there? Remember, we're building upon what we did in the previous page. So just different numbers, but you're going to attack the problem the same way. So for A, it says model the situation with an equation. Let K represent the number of knots. So remember, you're writing that division problem, but on the other side of the equal sign, you're just putting the letter K. For B, use the number line to represent the division equation. Okay, so now you don't have any tick marks. So be very careful um, that you're moving your tick marks as equal as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but try to make the distance between each of the tick marks as close as possible to equal, all right? And remember that last tick mark wants to be whatever your dividend is. And then the bullet points represent the dividend by labeling the tick marks, that's your whole numbers. Represent the divisor, that's from zero to one. How many parts or sections are you labeling it? Then represent the quotient by counting. How many tick marks did you get total? Then C, answer the question. How many knots are on the rope? And then for D, what related multiplication equation can you use to solve the problem? So you have your division from A, how can you relate it to a multiplication problem? All right, try your best on these problems and then we'll come back and solve them together. Go ahead and hit pause here. All right, great work. Let's go ahead and go through these. So for A, when I'm modeling the situation with an equation, what number do I start with? Well, I start with my three yards, right? That's my original number. So I'm starting with my three and then I'm dividing it into one third pieces. And again, they just wanted us to put it equal to K, probably for knots. All right, now B, this is the main part of the problem here, is on this number line. I know that I have three yards. So I need to first, the bullet point says, represent the dividend by drawing and labeling the tick marks. So I just wanna label one, two, and three. So I'm gonna put it roughly here, here, and here. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's as close as I can get. So that's gonna be one hole, two holes, and three holes. And just so it doesn't get too messy, I'm gonna go ahead and switch the color. We are gonna be um, putting them into thirds. So that second bullet point says, represent the divisor by drawing and labeling the tick, tick marks. So the divisor is that one third. So between zero to one, I wanna split it up into thirds. Remember that three thirds is gonna be your one whole. So your third tick mark is already the one. So I'm gonna have one third, two third, and then that's gonna be my three third. So one third, two third, one. Then do it again, between one and two, I'm gonna have a third, a second third, and then that last third is my new whole number. So one, two, and then three. You can also double check how many segments there are. If the tick marks are kind of throwing you for a loop, look at the segments. How many segments do I have between one and two? Well, I have one, two, and three. That's another way you can check if the amount of tick marks is throwing you for a loop. So when I'm labeling, I'm actually gonna go ahead and take away those marks. When I'm labeling my two blue marks between one and two, I have to put that whole number in front. So I have one and one third, one and two thirds, and then my one and three thirds, that would be one and one, which would be two. Now doing the same thing between two and three, I have a third here and a third here. So it's gonna be two, and a third, and then two and two thirds. So that is my fully labeled number line. That last bullet point under B says represent the quotient by counting. So let's just count how many tick marks I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So remember, if I had three sections with three whole numbers, that three times three is gonna be nine. And we'll see that in a second. So how many knots are on the rope? Well, I would have nine knots. All right, and then our last question, 
What related multiplication equation can you use to solve the problem? Remember, that's our three parts for three holes. So that is our three times three equals our nine. And then explain how you know, because there are three parts in the three sections. All right, that is it for this lesson. Go ahead and finish up the rest of these problems for this lesson, and I'll see you back for Module 11, Lesson 3.